If you can see firsthand of my recent infatuation with model train sets, you'll know that excitement runs hot through my blood. That same excitement can be translated to guitar. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take something super basic, right? Something like D major to E minor to B minor. Right, doesn't sound bad, but are you really a rail enthusiast playing that? That's like buying like a Polar Express kit off of Amazon and telling people that you rail. <laughs> nice try, all right? So we're gonna turn this D major, E minor to B minor into something like this. sexy model train way that we all aspire to, am I right? So we got three chords, and this is gonna be in the key of D, all right? You notice because we're starting with a D major chord, we're going to its two chord, E minor, and then its six chord, B minor. If you don't know what it means by numbering those, you should definitely check out the lessons on my Patreon because I go through everything from your absolute first guitar lesson to, uh, you know, some dude who just is, is slaying the finest women from his model train set <laughs> skills. Check that out on Patreon, right? So, D major, all right? We're gonna keep this the same both ways, all right? I wanna talk about something we can replace the E minor with to make it a little more exciting, all right? E minor is just basically a, a term that can mean anything. It could mean a chord, it could mean a scale, it could mean an arpeggio. That's the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a little bit of a mini arpeggio thing, all right? So the E on the B string is right here, the fifth fret. Okay, so you can do this in any other key. If you know where the root note of your chord is, in this case we said that we're in the key of D, the second note in its key is always gonna be a full step higher, two frets higher. You can always do this little move to play an E minor. Basically this is kind of like an arpeggio giving us the notes of an E minor. An E, a G, we're taking that A to a B. And it's really easy to do. You can do this for any minor chord in a key. It can replace any minor chord. In fact, minor chords are found on the second, third, and sixth notes in any key. So if this is one, we can do the same thing here, right? So our root note here is E. So this is E minor, five B, three, five, seven. The same thing a step higher. This is an F sharp. So F sharp minor is another chord in that key. And then B, is right here. The 12th fret of the B string is a B, right? So the spacing between these three minor chords is always gonna be the same no matter what key you're in. It's like, all right, we have the two chord, a step higher is the three chord, and then up to the six chord, right? We're only gonna kind of focus on just playing these spots here from the D chord. So instead of going D, major to E minor to B minor. We're gonna take this D major into a different voicing of a B minor. So what I did there is I'm like, all right, I know that I wanna kind of establish something with the E minor to make it kind of fit the theme of what I was doing, right? But again, uh, not all passenger car trains are created equal. You know, some of them are just really bargain bin ones. Other ones are uh, Bachman Industries, Bachman Enterprises, which I've researched, if you're in the know like I am. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take this D chord, and then we're gonna run through some of the other shapes that we just discovered because we're talking about, all right, well, there's a minor chord that's available to me in these single notes like that, and then I can do the same thing. So if I maybe combine some of these notes, I can do something like that. So I've got this D major, and then I'm gonna start doing these kind of little double stops where you play two notes at the same time together, right? So the first one after this D major, my ring finger's on the fifth fret of the B string, and my pointer finger is grabbing the third fret of the high E string. There's my E and my G, which is part of that E minor. And then I'm combining 5B and 5E, and sliding it into 7B and 7E. So this is kind of like counting as my E minor, okay? 
couple different ways you can look at that. You can look at that as just playing through notes in the scale, in the key of D. I'm thinking of this as being a way to kind of take this little arpeggio shape and start combining things into a spot that I may be more comfortable with, right? So uh, what this does is it ends up putting me on the seventh fret, okay? Now, anytime you take the two chord in any key and you do that little move, you're lining up with the fret that is going to be responsible for the minor pentatonic shape or the minor scale shape, okay? That's why I really like this kind of move to set up, right? This little, this little junction station where we're kind of making the switch from chord into maybe that minor pentatonic position. And since that third chord and the original D major, E minor, B minor thing, I'm just gonna do something else right here, okay? So maybe the first time I'm gonna pick a different chord voicing. I really like the sound of minor 11 chord voicings and they're actually a lot easier to play than bar chord voicings like this B minor, right? Anytime you see a B minor, you can always replace it with this. B minor 11, middle finger is on the B on the low E string, seventh fret. I'm skipping the A string, my ring finger and my pinky are grabbing the seventh fret of the D string and the G string. You can stop right there and make a B minor seven. In fact, we'll start by just doing that, right? So D major. That's just a B minor seven. You could add the 11 by putting your pointer finger on the fifth fret of the B string, which we've already kind of played, and it really lines up nicely just by that. See from that shape? Grab the root note. These fingers are already together. They go up to the D and G string. Pointer finger comes down. Right? D major. But maybe you don't want to stay on that chord the whole time. So let's do that. Double stopping through pentatonic positions, right? makes things super exciting. What's more exciting than double stopping through pentatonic positions, aside from maybe getting like a coveted Hogwarts Express addition to your rail, right? So right here, seven, 10, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, 10, seven, 10. Anytime you want to combine any of those two notes, double stop through the entire shape and really start to think about where those notes are because that is such an easily recreatable shape, minor pentatonic, that you can use over any of the minor chords in any key. Usually it sounds best when it's on the relative minor or the sixth degree in the key of D would be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's why that B minor always sounds really good, right? Because B is the sixth note in the key of D, right? So we're taking this D major, we're running it to this shape. I'm just doing this thing where I'm combining the D string and the G string, seven to nine, then the A and the D string, seven to nine, okay? So it's kind of, a, I get a little bit of a chord. Right? I just think that sounds a lot more exciting. Another really fun thing that you can do is uh, do a fun little arpeggio, right? Now let's focus on the lowest three strings right here. Seven, 10, seven, nine, seven, nine. If you play them in order, it always sounds like an arpeggio, right? Boring. Let me tell you how boring that is. So let's kind of make something where we know that coming from this shape, doing that, my middle finger is free right here. So I want to grab that root note with my middle finger, but I don't have to stop right there. I don't have to line it up just for the chord. I can do other things like maybe I want to slide, do some kind of cool little arpeggio run, utilizing all of those notes in the B minor pentatonic scale, right? So I've got this, my middle finger, I'm gonna slide from seven to 10. Get those three frets up there. Make it smooth, you know what I'm saying? Boom. And then that lines my pointer finger up with the ninth fret of the A string. Straight down a string for the octave. Slide it back, two frets. One string lower to the A string. And then slide from seven to nine. So I'm getting every note in that minor pentatonic shape. Maybe you can even turn that into a little bit of a lick, right? So we can kind of combine that with the... Uh, thing, 
Okay, so we've got a couple different ideas working here, right? I really think making guitar playing exciting is about combining a lot of these ideas, right? Using different chord voices, not that open is really bad, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of joking about open chords being boring. What I'm not joking about is the excitement and joy that model trains will bring into your life and your loved one's lives for great cost. <laughs> But, but basically, being able to kind of play in between a D, E minor, B, and then maybe just swish them out, D. You'll never, you'll never run out of things to do. I'm kind of just jumping around. Chord, arpeggio, chord voicing, double stop pentatonic scale, right? That's why it's really cool to kind of learn a few of these. And the great thing is they're just shapes. You can repeat them anywhere. Uh, I really think that it's valuable to practice this B string rooted arpeggio one, especially if you can kind of use different fingers like this to work on your reach. And again, if you know where the root note is, you can do this on the low E string too, right? What did we say were the minor chords that we're using? We're using an E minor, an F sharp minor, and a B minor, right? Well, the B is seventh fret. There's the lower octave of it, right? And then uh, we do the same thing with, again, any of them, all over the place. That F sharp, just like that. There's no limit to the excitement. You're limited only by the scope of your imagination and the amount of rail track that you've been able to purchase and find spare room for. Anyways, uh, rocking out the Taylor 614, as usual, great guitar. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, the website. Make sure you check out the Patreon. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know, and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.